know that he can shoot. I like seeing the guys that move up the ladder. My guy, Amari Moore from San Jose State, shot the ball well the other day. So those are the guys I'm excited about. Miami's yeah. knocked down a couple of yep. junks on. We saw Prosper with that monster dunk yes. in traffic. So we're seeing some highlights. And when I started covering the Nuggets and Carmelo got drafted, I don't know if you noticed, know Kiki Vanderway told me we're going to sign Lafonso Ellis to mentor Carmelo Anthony. Oh, wow. And... He said, I think that's the guy Carmelo needs next to him in the locker room to help him become a professional, to help him in the dog days, to be next to him when Canby's too busy to be next to him, and they didn't do it. I don't know. That's don't a remember? story to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, again, I'm flattered by that. I, yeah. I would have had the opportunity. You yeah. know how much I love the Nuggets, and, and they're doing great right now, by the way. Yeah, no, these, the these, these are suburban kids now. These, these, Two-car garage, man. Yeah, it's, it's different. A, it's different. <laughs> I always said my family... The newest, latest car. <laughs> like, well, of course, I had rise car. I had an opportunity to train Armando <laughs> since he was in the seventh grade. And I hope so he got it. He, and he, I hope he has all of that. He ain't living bad in Chapel Hill at all. So, but that's the difference now is these sure. these kids got money to make the decision with, and if, if like if it doesn't look right, then stay. It's, that that's stay. the case. Like why why Agreed. why roll the dice when you don't have to? Agreed. This year, tenth pick right now in our ESPN draft. And when you think about Omax's ability to make plays, as Bond mentioned, and defensively, I'm not sure we'll see him back in school. Oh, no. They waved it off. We want to thank you, Mark Spears. We appreciate Pleasure, you, man. Hopefully we didn't hang hold out. you up from I, the play. Do we have re the, the, the function no, of replay? No instant <laughs> replay here in the scrimmages. You know what the, the best thing about that? The, honestly, I think that when you look at the NBA, and it used to be a rule in the game, even on the offensive line with a great one, when you mentioned Penny Hardaway, of course, Fonz not played against Penny in the NBA, and it, before he was injured, it didn't get any better than Penny Hardaway. As Kendrick Davis continues to be aggressive, and you know what I like, jump shot. Right. He's putting pressures on the on the opposition by getting into the painted area, and he scores. Who, you know, to be honest, my size now at six two. If you're my size, especially smaller in the NBA today, you have to be elite at something. And that's the one thing we've got to see if he's elite. Can he make shots at a at a high clip from beyond Anthony Towns gets hurt? He steps up. He never went back to the G League after that because just as you said, Bobby, he can stretch the floor. The Timberwolves value his ability to shoot the basketball and allow their of course Anthony Edwards and those guys to be able to get downhill and have a free lane. Isaiah Wong continues to attack, goes reverse for the lane. All of a sudden, yes, usually he's accustomed to having, you know, 14 to 20,000 people uh, cheering his name and watching him as Seth Lundy knocks down another one. Somebody else. Like, there's hundreds of players here. How do you separate from that? And, you know, I, I, the thing with the draft is going to be interesting. There's two less spots this year because there's only 58 picks. We only have 20% of what the minimum so contract is, so you could be making about $600,000 here. Um, there's a tremendous amount of success stories of players that have been converted from a 2A to a standard contract. Yeah, Isaiah Wong beats everybody down the floor for two. He signs a two-way deal with Golden State, and Steve Kerr talked about how important Ty Jerome was to their team. And they had to, they had to calculate the number of games that he played to make sure they had him available at the end of the season. Of course, with Steph Curry's injuries as well, and uh, Gary Payton the second, they had to make sure they had Ty Jerome available to play in those games, even though he wasn't going to be eligible to play in playoff games. They had to make sure they had him available down the stretch. As Ulysses Kubelis turnover. To Trayvon Smith running the point for Team Brad puts up the three. Nothing but that. Don't argue any of that. Right. But when Fon says additions, <laughs> you're, you're correct. When you're adding one of the greatest players to ever play the game uh, in Candace Parker, that would be. Hey, Oh, with the throwdown. Jumped on his teammate. <laughs> <laughs> so no go with two hands. Over Andre Jackson, his UConn Husky teammate. Up there. Here's Beekman. Inside the Sheboy. Defense converges. 
Isaiah Wong had that hot hand in the first half with eight seconds on the shot clock. Wong, cock it back and throw it down. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Wong is he's point guard size, but his game is a scoring guard. Doesn't have much point guard skill from the standpoint of facilitating and kept their play elevated, able to get to the rim. We saw him in transition, get a couple dunks, got to the foul line, knock down a J. Fox, take a look at this replay. Ooh. Yes, and that's where he's so good. His ability, he plays at his own speed, you left crossover, however you want it. And then if you come and try to take a charge, he has that unique ability to be able to stop on a dime and knock it down from 15 feet. Some pattern together, just make sure everybody's got the, you know, right around a minute. Everybody, you know, gets to perform uh, around the same time. Uh, you know, offensively, defensively, we're not here for a reason, as you guys were chosen for a reason, because they're really good. So just doing a, you know, just trying to give them some encouragement that way and, you know, Telling them what we see out there and what, and what they think we can do better at. Brandon Lafonso Ellis here. Coaches love to have players who are coaches on the floor. Who's been your most vocal guy here today? Yeah, I, I think I think uh, Prosper. You know, uh, Jackson as well has, has been really good. Guys are really standing out in terms of that. So. Coach, you said something interesting in, in one of your huddles where you said play for for each other here, and it sounds simple. But certainly in this type of set. first meeting here uh, a few hours ago that, you know, again, try not to do anything that you can't do. And all these guys out here, all the scouts and GMs, they're looking for guys that can help their team win. At the end of the day, like, this isn't one-on-one -on -one out here. We're playing five-on-five, -five, and we really need each other out here to perform at our best, whether that's spacing, rebounding, uh, cutting, uh, playing your man one-on-one -on -one defensive. It felt like that was the best way to kind of get that message across that, you know, we all need each other. We all need to perform at, at, at our best level for each other <laughs> I want to talk about some more of your guys Brandon and this is John Triffin Oscar Sheboy he's got a double double mm -hmm. 10 points 13 rebounds what does he bring to the table both ends of the floor um, and again just you know being a leader out there in terms of his energy and his effort level uh, he's been great in the huddles in terms of trying to get everybody uh, excited and organized Boy, now you can get out and run. And we've seen his team get many transition baskets today. And, and another benefit that he has, I mean, again, <laughs> the, it's the All Championships Conference. Why wouldn't I be a homer to the ACC? Here's the difference. I don't actually cover the WNBA from a front office executive standpoint. Standpoint. What are some of the things you want to learn from them when you're asking them questions? Well, I think the first thing is, can we trust you? Mm. It's a financial investment now. Mm. It's a financial investment, whether it be on a on a first round contract, which is four years, or a second round contract, which is, is three years. Um, the, the other question is, is that I, I always ask prospects is, you know, pick his position once the draft is finished to go to summer league and really be able to have a great showing at summer league and talk about what Bobby's mentioned earlier signing one of those two-way contracts and now when you're on a two-way you're going to be and then your second round then there's everyone else and when you get to that everyone else section here that's when you're calling the agent and you're saying hey if we draft him will he go over and play in Europe Will he go play, you know, will he just spend a year in, in the G League here? And I think for Austin's perspective is it wasn't the best fit as far as going to a team in the late 50s. And he was able to pick the Lakers on his own, yeah. right? He was able to choose with the Lakers. And now he's going to parlay that undraft draft to him. Don't really like him. Is he not an explosive athlete, not a quick twitch guy? Uh, I think Andreas said it perfectly, is that he's never sped up, so he kind of plays at his own rhythm. And I think that lack of athletic explosiveness hurts him. And so for him to be at 10 points, 15 rebounds, that is the most rebounds by any player in the last five scrimmages. Beekman challenge from behind, and he's going to be fouled. He has two years of eligibility left. He could play two more years at University of Virginia if he wants it. I, I think that will be the decision to be made, but a lot of that will come after going back to school. Yeah, 10 days after the combine is over, so they have a little bit of a window here. They've got some pro days that are coming up, you know, certainly during this week after the, the games uh, today and, and Thursday, and then they've got pro days next week. Out. Told us, you know, Hunter says that he sees the ball coming off the rim better from the three position on the perimeter, and the part of the reason why he was able to be a much better rebounder this year. No look pass from Amari. That Isaiah Wong is older than Amari Bailey. Mm -hmm. That's where that potential of Amari Bailey becomes easier. Even more intriguing, very quick, which is all we have guys in, the, in our league who are up and underneath you for 94 feet. And so you don't necessarily need to have a guy who's six feet tall and controlling.
No, the score does, and what impacts is if you can get back on defense. And, I, and I've seen it a couple times with the blue. I mean, even right there. I mean, with the blue team, as I said, we've said it's a, it's a job evaluation here. Don't look for your own. Play team basketball. Nice dump that, off and to Bellis. Well, finish a look at this and you say, <laughs> wait a minute. Now, one team just competed much harder than everyone else did. Now, if you say one guy has stood out from a competitor, snaps it off the backboard, push it up the floor, and even in the half court, if you swing it to him, he can make a play off the dribble because he has a nice left to right crossover. And so that's the part that I've been looking at out here. I thought the, the strength that he's done exactly that. He's been able to finish around the rim. He's been on the backboard. He's blocked a couple of shots. He's got out in transition and run the floor. So he's played in the Eastern Conference Finals. will play tonight with seven undrafted players on that roster. So, oh, nice slip to the rim. So good. You get beat by 19. That's better than 21. <laughs> so even when we played together my last year in Denver, 97, 98 season, you would still take the last shot and you wouldn't get it today. No, you get the ball. Okay, thank you. you know that you know that was one of my objectives when I walked onto that team and you guys were five and fifty-four when I got there. <laughs> Tough year. One of my roles was to make sure Fonz gets the basketball. So that'll do it for game one here in the scrimmage. We got one more game coming up today here in Chicago. Team Bailey with a 107-88 win over Team Brad.